Okay, welcome to the Autodesk Motion Motor Motion Capture Pipeline tutorial. Um, we're going to be going through, I'm probably going to release a series of about six to seven tutorials covering everything from importing motion capture data into Motion Builder all the way through editing it to fitting it to characters, blending tracks together, everything that you could possibly need for motion capture. Um, my name is Peter Divers. I've been working with motion capture for six, seven years now. Um, I've worked over a fair few studios. My latest work is on Rugby League Live 2, um, where I was mo the lead motion capture artist, and also the motion capture operator on the day. We did over seven days of shoots, where we had up to three actors on stage at one point. Um, so this is doing everything from single body capture, single body with props, um, meaning the ball, um, all the way through to multiple people at once. Um, you know, some of those collisions with multiple people can get pretty full on. And, um, you know, we would need to optimise our marker sets and things like that to allow for the best collisions possible without losing too much data. So this game looks like it should be getting released at the end of this year, um, so I've heard. So, let's hop into it. This is our screen for Autodesk Motion Builder 2013. Um, it'll be much the same tutorial for 2010, 2011, 2012. A few different keys in some different places, but much the same. So we're going to quickly go through setting up our screen by going into our settings and our interaction mode. We're going to set up ours up for Maya. Um, purely because I use Maya myself and this is just the, it's more the navigation, some of the hit keys um, that you can use. So to navigate our space, um, what we're doing now is holding down Alt and using our left mouse button, Alt and our middle mouse button or pushing down the scroll wheel and Alt and our right mouse button to zoom in and out. With those three keys you can navigate very quickly. So our layout, at the moment we're in our editing view. You can see now that I've clicked into our scripting view or our preview mode, which is great for playing back your animations. Basically it's just an arrangement of all the different windows in your space. And of course you can make your own custom ones. There's a few different Python tools that you can access, batch tools to batch up processes. Um, some of these help menus, like a help menu, like our tutorials are in here, and also a link to the area. Area being an Autodesk website, um, filled with lots of tutorials and different things you can look at. It's also very good to be part of these forums. But back into Motion Builder. So we'll start off by importing our motion capture file. So we're going to go file then to a motion file import. Now you can see the different file types that we can import at the bottom there. But of course, we, as I said, is we'll be importing a TRC file. And we're looking for our T-Pose. A T-Pose is a very generic static pose stance that we record at the start of every single motion capture day. It's just a good reference pose. And you can see that on the screen there, represented 40 markers as dots. Now these will definitely vary from studio to studio, marker set to marker set, to something to keep in mind. So this is our transport controls down here, just showing through the windows that you can bring it up another way. And I'm left clicking and dragging our slider. You can see there's some subtle movement on that T-pose. That's because our actor on the day held it pretty straight actually. So this is our playback controls. Um, we can skip frame by frame. We can go backwards to the start. Uh, frames per second, we're playing back at 24. Purely because we're going to be, our final output will be at 24. We can play back at slower speeds. And we have a few options to snap on different frames if we need to. So looking through our navigator down the bottom here, we can see that there's our TRC opticals. Basically your navigator is a full display of everything that's going on in your scene. 
and you can see as I select a marker, being the back left head marker in that case, um, it shows up in the viewport. So your navigator is a huge list on the left side of the objects that you can select. On the right side we have our asset browser, also available from the asset browser under your window up here. Um, and we want to be left clicking and dragging in our actor. You can see our representation on the screen now. I am rotating around, so that was Alt left mouse button click to navigate around. So Alt any mouse buttons, remember. And what we want to try to do is fit this actor the best we can to this marker set. So using these tools on the side, so that's our toolbox of we can use we can move any of these objects. Remember it is a hierarchy based system. So if I grab the root sort of hips, they'll move together. If I rotate from the top of the hip uh, from the top of the thigh, sorry, that'll rotate all together. And you just gotta allow for these certain things while keeping the scale of your person the best it can. So as you can see that will scale that out. But if we want to scale, we really want to keep the the posture, the scale of this person more human-like. So first things with fitting this guy in, we want to go in and straighten him out. First, um, you want to make sure he's facing the right direction. Um, easiest way to do that is to look at the spine markers. They'll always be on the back, running straight the spine there, as you can see. And you want to make sure that they're also positioned right in that spine area. All markers, that's why I always have more spine markers than they will chest markers. So you want to make sure that's straightened up by moving those hips. Moving it forward a little. Everything comes out from the hips. Remember that hierarchy system. So I'm going to change my view here and going into my orthographic modes. So this is a 2D display from the top. And you can use these to help straighten up your poses, which I've actually done a fluke to quite a very nice rotation there, actually. But just looking to get those markers sitting on top of the shoulders properly, and through the rest of the body. So, moving to my scale tool, I'm going to quickly switch back to my perspective mode. So I can scale up the hips a little, working through the stomach region, up through the chest, and then having a look, yeah, I'm probably, yeah I'll scale this size a little, and move this up, remembering that we need to get those feet flat on the ground, and we're going to scale those arms out a little bit from that shoulder, and of course you've scaled everything else, so we have to scale the head as well. having a look from always different views. One thing about 3D is, is you always have to keep changing your view. Um, if you sit in 2D mode for too long you can definitely get lost so always look around from different aspects to see you know to get the best view that you possibly can. So up here in our character controls which you can access through window and character controls if you need to. And our file button here um, we have under actor IK Manip standing for IK manipulation. Basically it rigs your, your actor here with an IK system um, and you can use your translate tool here and it bends the arms and bends it all you know properly so this is a very useful tool especially for the arms. So one thing I'm setting up here that we have to remember is our elbow marker. The elbow should be the main driver almost of that upper arm and the lower arm's main drive should be that wrist marker. So because of that, we need to make sure that elbow marker sits above that elbow segment of our actor. Second most important thing is down near the wrist here, is that wrist marker will sit on the wrist, but the thumb and the pinky marker, those two at the end, they aren't actually on the end of those fingers, they're at the base of them, on the knuckle. So, just making sure that they aren't going out too far. It's also good to introduce a slight bend to the arm, as it's very rare that the person has their arm completely fully locked. Plus, it just introduces that bend to start off the animate, um, to start off your solve. So it allows it to flow a bit more fluently. So 
So once again, we're just going to fix up the other arm in the same way. Make sure that wrist is right on that wrist, that elbow is before the elbow, and I'm just going to rotate these. As once again, the person very rarely has that hand flat, dead flat as well. Now, moving these feet in, still with my arcane manip option on, it moves the whole leg. And this person's standing a little strange actually, but I can rotate those feet out a bit. As those markers were across the front of the foot, or about halfway up the foot. As I said, it's, these markers will definitely change from studio to studio. So you're really just looking for the best global fit that you can. The main thing you try to do if you can think this through is allow your, your actor is a scaled representation of the person you actually shot on the day. The person who you shot in the mocap studio. But you've got to remember that this actor is a scaled human. So you should change as least as possible. So down our navigator, we want to rename our actor to, well in this case Pete, that was the actor that we had on the day. Um, and you can see that if I click here on the left side, I get the properties, the options for it on the right hand side. That's like anything in our navigator. If I left click anything on the left tab, it'll pop up here. I just wanted to create that marker set, so I'll marker set and create. And now what we have to do is make our links. So it's left click drag, left click being the mouse button, and dragging that into these different options. I just hold down shift there to group select a few more. And we're just going to slowly go through dragging and dropping these into section different areas. Now you can see here that I've stopped at that wrist, putting the pink and thumb into that wrist, and left that last slot open at zero. That's because that last slot is made for finger capture, and we haven't captured any fingers or anything like that on the day. Um, we could also hook gloves into that, like cyber gloves and things. But we'll keep going down. Um, this gets a little confusing that we put them all, all the way down to low back in that top chest section purely because each area can only hold five markers and we want to put all of our hip and our root markers in that bottom bit there um, we need a stable base so once again I'm holding shift to select a few more at the same time and that's that left click drag into those slots and just like the fingers I'm leaving that last um, up little box open um, so it's on zero markers um, once again you can capture more toes which in my years we've never actually done but it's there if you need it so this is our active we want to make this active so now our markers are driving each segment you can see our actor moves slightly but they're driving that segment and at this point, we're going to save this out. You should always save these different points, especially in motion, but it's a very linear sort of process, and it can be a bit difficult to go back sometimes um, to save this out. So, thank you for watching this tutorial, and in our next tutorial, we will go through bringing in a CG character to which will be driven by our motion capture data and a few different retargeting things we can do to help improve our solves. Um, that's it. Thank you again.